Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shook. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then the hurt child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. All week, been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. All right. Thanks. So, any parts you'd like to get to know better or change your relationship? Or any trailheads, any stories? Okay. <laughs> um, well, at the moment, I'm, I feel nervous. My heart feels like it's beating a little strongly mm. um but that's that's whenever i have like a phone call appointment or have to you know any kind of assignment or appointment or anytime i have to show up and do something or be something yep i just i get um like this anxious feeling yeah um okay that's you know, very, very frequent. Okay. Um, so that's what's present at the moment. Okay. Um, does it feel, how strong does it feel? Uh, it's like a five out mm -hmm. of 10. Okay. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm a little blended, but, um, mm -hmm but aware, you know, what's happening. Okay. okay. Um, able to see it. Okay. We can start there. Yeah, probably. It's okay. probably related to everything else. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll start with just looking out and kind of identifying how it shows up in the body. Just kind of seeing if you can name what it feels like to be five out of 10 nervous. Yeah. I'm aware of my heart beating. Um, and, and on the verge of tears kind of feeling, mm. um, my tears is my, is my emotional reaction to most things. Mm. Okay. Or expression, maybe. Mm hmm Okay. Do the tears always go along with the nervous? If I, yeah, if I pay enough attention, yeah, they're there. Mm. Okay. I can busy them away, but if I stop and notice, um, they're usually there. Okay. And paying attention to that and acknowledging that seems to calm it down too. Yeah. 
yeah, we can just keep doing more of that. Paying attention and acknowledging. And maybe even welcoming. Just mm. sending a message that your hearts are welcome. Yeah, that's that's a good reminder. That's often not my first response. Sure. Um, you know, it's like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe we can look out for that too. What are the other responses or other parts that come up? Yeah, in response to the nervousness. Yeah, yeah. There's a. Um, uh, you know. You should be able to figure this out or get over this or, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And there's also, um, there's also a appreciation that when I do pay attention to that, um, that that's a rich place to go, you know, that I learn a lot right. and I mm -hmm. get, the, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of compassion that goes up too when I, turn inward okay how would it feel to turn your attention to the one that says you should be able to figure this out and get over this just let it know that you also see it and feel it and that what it's saying makes sense it makes sense for it to want you to figure this out and get over it. Yeah. And ask if it needs anything from you to let you do that in your own way. To do that kind of figuring out or understanding of the part See if it will give you space to do that. Yeah, I, I get the feeling that it's uh, it's been watching me do that more and more. So it's like, okay, I am. You're right. I get it. <laughs> Great. Okay, a little trust trust building there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now, how are you feeling towards the nervous part? Um, I'm I'm curious. I'm paying attention, and um, feeling, you know, the sensations, and mm -hmm. and to understand. Yeah, I'm also curious. So you could let it know that we're both curious. That we've um we recognize and and have tried to ask from space for any other parts that maybe aren't so curious and just want to get over it yeah again just that it's welcome If it feels all right, you could ask it if it wants what it wants you to know, or if it wants to tell you anything about itself. But it seems like there's um, kind of like it's trying to show me that there's really a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear. Yeah. Okay. Sounds important. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I understand the feeling. I don't know what that means. Yeah. But Yeah, well, what that's what, about. Yeah. Okay. Try letting it know that. Let it know that you feel that feeling of fear. That you're not sure what all that's about. 
and that you'd like for it to tell you anything it knows about that. And if at any point that feels like too much, if it feels like, you know, you don't want to just experience all that fear, just let it know that too, to just see if it can show you in a way that's not overwhelming. Yeah. The feeling is like a broken heart. Mm. Um, that's just the image or the sensation I'm getting right now. Okay. Okay. Yep, just letting know you're getting that. feels like it feels comforted and understood just by us recognizing that it's kind of a broken yeah. heart feeling that is it is beneath this i think so okay great yeah so i don't know we want to do more of that comfort it through understanding There's a, there's a part that keeps wanting to know what I, you know, I want to know what this is about, though. I want to understand. I want to figure mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. um, but the parts don't usually want to tell me. <laughs> Seems. Yeah, well, they might not want to tell the one, they might really not want to tell the one that wants yeah. to figure it out. <laughs> right, that's true. Yeah, if it has an agenda and its goal is just get over it, get, stop being nervous, you know, like it's, mm -hmm. or, or it has some other goal, maybe it, you know, the other kind of figure out parts might be just analytical, um, see this kind of as, as a, just an interesting study. Just ask those ones yeah. for space. Yeah. It's like that manager that just wants to figure everything out. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> That's, Really useful, right? In a lot of in a lot of areas. Yeah. Yeah. Just let it know that that it is useful. And ask it for space. And also that there will be time for figuring out later. Like we have the call recorded and <laughs> you know. Yeah. Another message I would want to send to a nervous part, you know, if it's showing you a broken heart, sometimes those feelings or images, they might be from age two or something. And maybe there isn't, there isn't a real clear uh, connection that a part is able to show you. And I just want to mm -hmm. let it know that that is okay. It doesn't have to figure it out for us. And if all it has, if all it has is a feeling, that that's okay. You can just let us know about that feeling. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You might ask how long it's had this broken heart feeling.
I don't, I don't get anything. I mean, it's not recent. I'm not getting anything, but it, I know it's Mm -hmm. not recent. I mean, it's not. That's fine. That's fine. You could ask it if it has a concern or a fear about us learning more about the broken heart. If it doesn't really want to go there. Which is fine. I don't, I don't feel any resistance. I feel openness, though. So. Okay. I, I have a. What's been coming to me is a um, like the intelligence in the body and the spaciousness of self. Mm-hmm. You know that that's all there to um, experience or contain. <clears throat> right. Yeah. That's right. Self can kind of contain all the parts. And won't be damaged mm-hmm. by them. Self's, self's heart won't be broken. Mm. That felt encouraging. <laughs> Is there anything else you're noticing about the nervous part or the tears feeling or the broken heart feeling. I'm not feeling, uh, I'm not feeling, I mean, I'm noticing a space in my chest, but I'm not Mm -hmm. feeling like the fearful emotions at all. Okay. What feels right for you? Would you like to keep asking about, you know, we could we could kind of think about one of the messages this part had is when you when you have to show up and do something or be something, and we could kind of run that past it and say, well, you know, kind of in a way we're kind of provoking it and saying, is it is it this? Is it this? Provoking is probably the yeah. wrong word, but just um, yeah. Well, I yesterday was st- stressful, um, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's related, but it's all, it also has to do with sort of a um, threatening is the word that comes to mind. But mm-hmm. um, I was knocking on doors for our, um, you know, for our county party, and mm-hmm. it's not something I like, you know, look forward to doing <laughs> it's mm-hmm. something I feel obligated to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people at the, you know, behind those doors that are very, <laughs> have a totally different worldview than I do. Right. And, um, and it feels threatening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Does it also feel uh, a little heartbreaking? Yeah, probably. So can you say that again? <laughs> I said probably. Yeah, yeah. If, if I really deeply about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, but challenging, really challenging. Sounds like it. So when I hear you say that story, I hear that I don't really like knocking on doors, but I feel obligated. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm hearing kind of two parts. The yeah. you're supposed to knock on doors. This is like this is our duty. But yeah. And another part that says, I don't like this. This feels threatening. This feels 
however uh, else. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, those two parts are, um, I see the polarization a lot in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mm -hmm. hope that, I want that I do that. Yeah. Or that I have those parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you think about just even before you've gone to knock on any doors, is that nervous part up really strong before you're? N no, it's afterwards because mm -hmm. I'm geared up. Like I'm going to do it, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not, it's not terrible while I'm doing it. It's, uh, it's all the thoughts afterward. I'm like that didn't feel good. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Okay. You know, like I'm, I'm all strong and brave and, you know, doing the thing. And then like last night I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about like, what are these people thinking? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. just crazy to me. So, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but like when, when you got on this call, you had that nervousness up front and that one was mm -hmm. more about like, when I have to show up to do something or to be something. So I'm wondering if that is, if that's different, that kind of. Yeah, it's, it seems um, somehow different. Um, okay. Just yeah, the, the, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just right. trying to mm -hmm. think that that nervousness there when I have to make a phone call or, or do a task, um, that kind of, follows me around <laughs> um mm -hmm. often and okay. just in my daily life but this but this part i think is reacting to that it's like there's there's bad intent out there and i'm worried about what's going to happen someday yes. or okay that kind mm -hmm. of yeah that's the one that feels threatened yeah okay um, because we started with the nervous part, see mm -hmm. if you can kind of check this out with it. Is, is it also like, does it have anything to say about the knocking on doors and the feeling threatened? Or does it feel like, uh, that's a separate part or a separate thing? Does the, does the broken heart that it wanted to show you? Um, or the fear that it showed you, is that connected to the knocking on doors and the feeling threatened? You could just ask it if it has any kind of input or feelings about that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, just get up and close my door because my wife is being very loud. Hold on. Okay. Um, just looking for connections between the knocking on doors I, I, thing and the nervous. Yeah. It, it I mean, it, they might be connected. I'm not, but okay. what I'm, what feel, what seems makes sense in the moment is that the broken heart feels like a past thing and the mm -hmm. threatening feels like fear of the future kind of thing. Okay. It'd be related but that's what it seems like okay what feels right for you what which of these parts do you think need your attention now or would you like to get to know better uh, it's either the part that feels obligated to do the thing <laughs> yes yes or the or the part that um is feels threatened i mean those are both pretty big okay okay um great okay I'm working together <laughs> okay all right let the nervous part and the broken heart thing let the, let them know that, that we're going to turn our attention to the knocking on doors and the feeling threatened yeah, yeah. and that we can come back to them <laughs> yeah Okay.
Um, yeah, my intuition is to start with the knocking on doors part, the strong and brave one that says this is your obligation. Yeah. So you feel right to go there and to so yeah, can connect, yeah. connect with that part? Okay. How does that one show yeah. up in your body? It feels like it's in my head. I don't have like mm -hmm. sensations. It feels like mm -hmm. that's what sitting. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel towards it? Um, I feel kind of sorry for it. Um, yeah. I feel, um, you know, in a compassionate way, it's like, oh, that has to be so hard. <laughs> Great. Can you show it that? Just let it know that it looks like it looks hard for it to have to have that job. See if it wants to tell you anything about itself and why that job is important. Well, it's, um, and the feelings that are coming up are like fragile and frightened, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Like, like it has to um, override all that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let it know that makes sense. That there's there's feelings of being fragile and frightened in there. And the strong part overrides that. It doesn't want you feeling fragile and frightened. It's it, it's when I think about the. Um, it reminds me of the part that we talked about last time. The part that was young and had to like manage everything and hold everything together. And, That's right. You know, I recall. Um, yeah, it reminds me of that. You know, it, uh, we, you know, we make sure you know all this stuff works and. The whole system depends on you, you know? Mm. Okay. Okay. So it feels like it might be connected. And I think last time you were saying that felt like maybe a seven to 10 year old. Yeah. Kind of. mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It was, I mean, it started young. It just kept going and going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Let the strong and brave part know that you, that you're sensing that connection. And again, that it makes sense. I just keep having this question repeat in my head, like, why is it all up to me? Why does it have to be all up to me? Yeah, yeah. It's a great question. It sounds like... Mm -hmm. That maybe that that is a message from the strong and brave part is that it's all up to you. We need to get strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could ask it. Like, what happens? What happens? What's it afraid would happen if you you weren't obligated? You didn't feel that sense of obligation and didn't rise to the occasion. Well, there's, I'm aware of two scenarios. One is chaos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the one is, the other one is peace. <laughs> Curious. There would be more peace in you if you didn't have yeah. to. Uh -huh. Right, right. Um, 
and more chaos wasn't, out in the world. I wasn't trying to solve the entire world's problems. I probably mm-hmm. didn't feel that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But at the time, it, I think it probably felt like chaos. Like I had to do something to to feel like my world was in control or something. Mm-hmm. To again feel like as the kind of seven year old that's yeah okay yeah. check all this out with the brave part see if those connections make sense and if you're in the right area and if so you could just try to show it appreciation for trying to help out reduce that chaos yeah, it was, it's, it's been really good at its job. I mean, it's done a really yeah. good job. Yeah. Of, yeah. Um, you know, helping me succeed. and Right. Right. Sure. Yeah. Let it, let it know that it's done a good job. Yeah. I'm feeling, um, Acknowledgement or appreciation, you know, like yes, yeah, feel, yeah. You could try asking what it would rather be doing if it wasn't, if it didn't have to take that responsibility for the chaos, or if there was just less chaos, or if it had your help. How it would rather be spending its energy. This this came up recently in a um, session that I had, and um, what I think is there would be like wise action, you know, like um, doing things from a place of self, you know, from a place of openness and security and not from a place of fear and yeah. trying to handle chaos, you know? Yeah. That's the aim up and that's what feels mm-hmm. like this part could be doing even the same actions with just different experience or different motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. It's all making a but lot of I, sense to me. I just want, want you to know that, yeah, this sounds great, you know, and it sounds ideal of getting self's perspective and self's leadership and not mm-hmm. abandoning our parts, our manager parts, our go get busy parts, but just, yeah, kind of having um, a guide and a security yeah. so that they're not having to to work to solve other par- other problems that other parts are having. You know, parts are feeling fragile and frightened. That could be something that you help out with. Yeah, not to. I'm thinking of that that should part and. Um, being sensitive to that motivating me, you know, mm-hmm. instead of um, a less protector-driven, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So with the strong and brave part, how old does it think you are? I'm getting a like a teenager sense, but I'm, I'm mm-hmm. not really sure. Okay. Yeah. If you want, you could ask more about that or just 
ask you to show you maybe what that teenager was feeling or in what situations the bravery came in for the teenager. Well, the, I mean, this, I don't know if this is related, but when I, when teenager part shows up, the, the most, um, challenging situation that, that I can remember is, um, not being able to talk to my mom about the sexual abuse from her husband. That, that always comes up with teenager holding it together. And I don't know if that's related. That's just what that age okay. reminds me. Are you okay with it showing you that now? Yeah. Okay. Let it know that. Let the strong and brave part know how old you are. And that you can be here to learn about and to help out a teenager or any fragile and frightened parts. Yeah, I think I think there was relief at knowing that there's an an old grandmotherly part, <laughs> an old mm -hmm. wise part. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. How does it feel? Yeah, about that idea, how does the brave part feel about letting you go to these other parts? There's, I mean, it feels like cooperation, it feels like, um, acknowledgement. Okay. Of all the what everybody's been doing and feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does so anything else come up for you? Are there any other parts that have concerns about, um, yeah, learning more about this or these parts? It feels like progress it feels like i mean all these parts have been coming up in different ways and and um being seen at different times and it feels like there's uh what's the word i'm looking for like unification something yes. like that <laughs> yeah 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 yep that's what we're doing bringing everybody yeah. home yeah yeah it's really feeling like that Okay. Feels more. It's feeling more spacious and great. Hopeful. Great. <clears throat> yeah. Have you worked with these, what I'll call exile parts before in IFS? Have you gone and met yeah. with the teenager or the? Or fragile, frightened part. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a, there's like a, I don't know if it's a part or a guide, but like, um, it's sort of like a female angel, um, loving guide figure that shows up. Hmm. Sometimes that's been really reassuring. I mean, just having that image in my mind is hmm. helpful. Okay. Did that part, was that part also showing up when you were a teenager? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
aware of um, that, that part or image um, appeared when I was working with my um, feelings about my sister that died before I was born. Mm. And that's kind of how she ended up appearing in my mind. Okay. Okay. All right. Got some options. We, we met this strong and brave protector and it's kind of polar part was the part saying, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to knock on doors. This is threatening. And we could, we could go back and learn more about that part, or we could lean into whether it's this feelings from teenage years, or if it's uh, younger, fragile and frightened, then we could try to do some work there. You know, sometimes that can take a lot longer. So yeah. that would be my only caveat is that yeah, we might yeah. only be able to to begin uh, meeting them and witnessing them and might have to bookmark that. Yeah. Uh, um. Or we can stay with the strong and brave part and kind of do some more negotiating with it and seeing what it needs from you. Especially when it's, yeah, when it's pushing. Well, the the question that keeps coming up is, why is it so hard for me to say no? Mm -hmm. You know, that part that does the thing I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Yeah. I don't have a, I don't have an awareness of that. Part, like a image mm-hmm. or a okay. or a feeling about it, you know a sensation about it I just yeah let's, let's <laughs> yeah let's tune back in I think to the strong and brave one and maybe ask it uh, yeah how it feels when you just contemplate kind of saying no saying no to knocking on doors or just what else comes up or yeah, how it feels about that. It's afraid of being criticized. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that makes sense. Does it point to... Does it have more it wants to say about those feelings that come up when you're criticized or? Well, there's, there's shame. Uh-huh. You, know, it, you know, it brings up shame. Mm-hmm. That feeling of being criticized or corrected. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Uh, you know. Does that shame also feel connected to the teenager or frightened parts? I I don't think so. Okay. Uh,
still feeling compassionate for the strong and brave part? Yes. <laughs> okay. You try asking it what it needs from you. What it needs from you in those times when maybe you have other parts that are saying, no, we don't really want to do this, or when it's feeling like we really need to get into gear so that we can avoid being criticized. You can ask it how you can help it from, from self. just it seems like the shame is just so ingrained like it's so mm -hmm. deep mm -hmm. um, yeah yep I appreciate it for showing you that again appreciate it for wanting to protect you from feeling so much shame And I, I was just had this thought that it's it's just all an act, you know, <laughs> um, just to cover up that shame. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a reasonable way to look at it. The protector, <laughs> protectors are acting, and yeah, they they usually are. Uh, they usually have one job to do. It's often, or maybe even, maybe even always around around shame. Um, mm -hmm. Shame, shame is kind of like a burden that um, exile parts are carrying. Yeah, yeah. Just let it know that that's something that you can help out with. From that kind of wise grandmother self that you can go and meet any part that is carrying shame and you don't have to work with it in the same way that this part does this part's kind of trying to cover it up or push it away and that you have other tools that you can use now There's kind of like this uh, argument going on, mm -hmm. the shame. But this, you know, but I, that's what I believe. I believe I'm not enough. And yes. then, yes. oh, but, you know, really, <laughs> you are. <laughs> and then it's like, wait, what? Yeah. Yes. I believe I'm not enough. You know, and then there's a part that's like knows that that's not true. <laughs> mm -hmm. And a part that's going to go prove that to the world by kicking ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> not exactly what it looks like, but sure. <laughs> Sorry. I'm speaking from my own parts there. <laughs> mm hmm. 
I, I guess my wife would probably say that, though. She thinks thinks that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Well, I meant it in a positive way of yeah, knocking on doors and getting those signatures or whatever. I mean, you're, you're out there uh, having an impact and facing those facing the fears of the chaos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but in you, there's a part that believes I'm not enough. So I feel like, do you see an age connected with that part? Um, I mean, there are, there are a few memories um, of times where I felt shamed and belittled. Um, probably the youngest was five-ish or so that okay. I can remember. Okay. So if you like a part that you'd like to just learn a little more about right now and let it know that you're here and you you see it. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just um it it's feeling seen and cared for and surprised by that. Yep. Um Did it have those not enough feelings? Pardon me? Did it have those feelings of not being enough? That shamed part? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. Let it know you see that. And that it doesn't have to be alone in that. And that you can keep seeing it and keep being with it and unburden it. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I've been noticing is just being a, being able to get in communication with that part. Right. Is there any request that it has of you now? Does it want something, anything that would make it more comfortable? Um, Just more more of this, you know, more yes, of yes, yes. You know. Um yep. yeah, I'm just need to I need to schedule. I need to put it in my calendar. Absolutely. Um, I I oh. was doing that one mm-hmm. have, you know she busy and so yeah that needs to happen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is that something you feel like you can commit to is, is getting back to this part. And yeah. also I would love to help with that. So, um, I don't, I think you're not on the calendar again, right? We don't have any other. Th- I just, I did misunderstood about the two links. Yeah. And I okay. Missed. Okay. Okay. I will contact you about that and get you back on as soon as possible. If you like. Cool. Yeah. And I'm happy to, to commit to a five-year-old or a teenager, or any other parts, to come back and be with nice. them and learn more about them. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be um, communicating with me in the meantime. That's right. Um, yeah, I really. I mean, this is just what I needed. I'm, I mm-hmm. really appreciate it. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And you can let all cool. these parts know, all these parts we met along the way, just let them know that they all matter. And, you know, this is the process. You know, you started with a nervous part and a broken heart feeling and 
we don't we haven't seen all the connections yet but eventually they lead us to the parts that need us they all do but yeah but uh yeah cool Mm -hmm. thank you james you're very welcome um i would have one last question which is just to to ask again if the strong and brave part has anything else any other requests it has of you uh going forward if it's if it likes just seeing you go and work with these exiles or if it has any kind of here's what we need to do next time you know next time I, a part of me wants to say no or anything like that so how you can stay in touch with it and let it know that that you're here yeah yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, writing is what came to mind because sometimes mm-hmm. that's what clarifies the thoughts, you know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a write before I respond. <laughs> mm, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll be in touch and we can let these exile parts know that we'll be in touch with them too. All right. If anything comes up in the meantime, feel free to message me about any of this. I, I enjoy getting those messages. And on uh, on Discord? That's the fastest or, way. Okay, on Discord. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Good work. Have a great day. Okay. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um, I've been noticing things um, that I'm nervous, of course, like I always am um, Mm -hmm. on a phone call. And I was noticing that and it it feels like some kind of a fear of failure in some weird way. That's kind of the feeling it is like, oh, oh, I might do something wrong or I might say the wrong thing or I might something, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've no, I'm noticing that my anxiety has been um, a lot, you know, a a lower. What's how Mm -hmm. can I, it's less. (laughs) It's um, and it's, I, I, it was improved when I started IFS, but now I'm Mm -hmm. taking um, that medication and um, not for anxiety, but it seems to be having a Mm. beneficial effect. So I'm not complaining about that. Okay. Um, But, and I, and then I, I had um, Labor Day weekend. I was as part of this chair of this democratic committee that I'm on. Mm -hmm. I was, at the fair, we have a booth at the fair. Mm-hmm. And um, so I had some interactions with people who um, don't agree with us, right. <laughs> which mm-hmm. was kind of cool. I mean, it, I'm glad they were even interested in having a conversation. Yeah. And I had a conversation with one guy and he was saying all kinds of things that are 
like, you know, not true at all. Okay. And I could feel my, I could feel my insides like getting really jittery and, uh-huh. you know, upset, but I mm-hmm. was noticing it. And I was noticing that, I mean, I, I don't know if I said anything to myself, but I just noticed that that was happening and that was mm-hmm. okay. And I could still talk to this person and the world wasn't going to end. I mean, it was, yeah. a, it was a good feeling. Um, and I, I, last time we were talking about the part of me that like powers through and, you know, uh-huh. it didn't feel exactly like that. It felt more um, grounded than that. Yeah. Yeah. You're listening to the parts, right? Acknowledging that. Yeah. yeah. In and, real time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, um, and so that's mostly what I've been noticing. The, the part that seems to be most busy lately is the responsible part, you know, that because, well, we have a new puppy mm. and we have two um, older dogs who aren't so sure about the puppy. So we're having to do a mm. lot of dog management and it just feels like a lot <laughs> more responsibility, you know? Yeah. So I'm feeling like in overdrive on the responsibility uh, train. Uh-huh. Um, but that's, so that's part I'm noticing that's working the hardest lately. Yeah. The responsible, being responsible part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which, you know, it seems like it's um, a little more like it's working hard for the wrong reasons. Like it feels like an old part that's like taking everything on when it doesn't really have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm having a hard time sussing that out. But that's partly because I've not taken hardly any time to really sit and contemplate these things. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now's the time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Would you like to start with a minute or two of meditation? Um, yes, a minute, I think, would be fine. Okay. All right. I'll set a timer. Okay. Okay. So, anything else come up for you in that time, or still wanting to focus on this responsible take things on part? Um, probably the responsible part, but the but one idea that came up or thought that came up during meditation was there's a part that really appreciates being seen, Mm -hmm. Um, and I was thinking it specifically in the. in IFS context. And I kind of get that from a couple of online groups that I'm in. And especially in the Monday chat, I, that's just really mm. a rich um, time. Nice. So anyway, I was just noticing that. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, the responsible part. Yes. All right. So how has it been showing up for you? How do you notice it in your body when it does come on? It feels like um, tightness in my chest. Mm -hmm. Um, Sort of like urgency. And there's probably some fear in there. Mm-hmm. You mentioned at the beginning of the call that you also were, had some anxiety. How is that mm-hmm. at the moment? Um, that doesn't seem to be there. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, the anticipation of a call more than the actual mm-hmm. <laughs> being mm-hmm. on the call. Right. Um, so that doesn't seem to be there. 
Okay. Okay. And back to the responsible part, tight chest, urgency. How do you feel towards it? Well, I'm really um, appreciating it showing me, you know, that I'm seeing it more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really appreciating that. And mm -hmm. I really want to understand, you know, I really want to know. Great. Why it works so hard. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Just see if you can direct all that appreciation and curiosity towards it. Invite it to speak with you. And sometimes a good first question is, what do you want me to know? It seems like it's waiting for me to figure out how to handle things better or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Like it's um, being patient with me, I guess. Yeah. In a way, yeah. And, and in the meantime, it's got to handle things. Yeah, it's got it. Yeah, yeah. It's got to go okay. into overdrive to... Okay. Yeah. What's it afraid would happen if it didn't do that? Well, things things wouldn't get taken care of. Like there's nobody else that will that will pick up the slack and um and somebody or something will suffer. Like I'm thinking in terms of the dogs. Like if mm -hmm. I don't make sure they're happy and no one's getting hurt and um you know, I can't just ignore them. I have to keep on top of things and mm -hmm. Yeah. Or else one of them will suffer. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else it wants to show you about if it didn't work so hard? I'm not sure I'm the, the what's coming up is why do I think that everything is up to me? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, the dog will survive if they're, you know, mm -hmm. if they have to stay outside five minutes longer or, you mm -hmm. know, like I get really worried about how they're feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's this part specifically mm -hmm. that it has that mm -hmm. concern. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's worried about now I'm thinking of it, that in terms of parenting. Which was hard. We feel right to just stay with that and see what else it wants to show you about. The difficulty Probably. there? Yeah, that's where the emotion is. Mm -hmm. Mm 
there's feelings of guilt about um not you know not knowing how to be a good parent in, mm-hmm. in some situations yeah okay are you okay with the what is showing you around that and that coming up yeah yeah okay yeah it makes sense great yeah i just let it know that <laughs> that makes sense and then it's okay for it to show you that I'm wondering if um, that part really helped me to parent because I probably didn't know, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, a yeah. lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Good short appreciation for its intention. Yeah. Um, you could also ask how long it's been working in this way. Did it start before parenting started? Yeah, I, I imagine so because it's you know goes back again to that parentified young child that felt like it needed to stay on top of things at home. Is it showing you something about that? Um, I'm just picturing um, feeling like the laundry needs to be done and the dishes need to be washed and the house needs to be cleaned and Mm -hmm. um, when I was a kid. And about what ages that well, feel like that, it was? Yeah, that's that like seven to ten and mm-hmm. on. Okay. And if it's all right to stay with that, uh, what happens if the laundry doesn't get done and the house doesn't get clean to that seven and t- seven to ten year old? Yeah. I mean, there it's punishment could be involved. Mm-hmm. Um, and and there's a sense of um, <clears throat> trying to make <sighs> control the chaos, you know, um, making it feel safe. By, um, you know, making the the environment orderly or, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. That's what the seven to 10 year old was dealing with was the threat of punishment and the feeling like her environment was chaotic and this was a way to make it feel safer. Yeah. Make it feel more. Uh, calm or something Mm -hmm. orderly Um, like I I get a lot of um, satisfaction or um, serenity out of having a orderly environment and things being checked off the list or yeah. taken care of. And okay. How does the responsible part feel about you kind of having this glimpse back to age seven to 10? Does it like having all that acknowledged and seen? 
Yeah, it feels like there's a lot of mutual understanding mm -hmm. happening. <clears throat> Great. You could ask it what it would rather be doing with its energy if it didn't have to work so hard. Like if we could help or heal any parts that are burdened with fear of punishment or chaos or guilt. Just more, more relaxed and able to let, just let things flow more. Um, mm -hmm. You know, kind of have a compromise between total chaos and needing to have control everything, you know, mm -hmm. like a happy medium where mm -hmm. things can just be in flow and more appreciating the yeah the moment you know and mm -hmm. and, I, and that has been happening more and more i've really noticed how like in my relationship you know it's mm -hmm. that's calmer and more um yeah i mean it, it's been a good process a good uh, evolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how old does how old does the responsible part think that you are? I don't, I don't get a, um, an age, but, mm -hmm. but it goes back to that sort of, um, uh, gradually trusting that it doesn't have to do it all that, that I can, um, actually manage things in a yeah. more reasonable way. Okay. So it's like, you know, it's, gradually trusted me more i think mm -hmm. yeah earlier you said it was waiting for you to figure out how to handle things yeah yeah that that kind of feeling mm -hmm. maybe you could ask it about the specifics around that like what would it need to see in you or from you to trust you more. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure I'm the, if I could relax more, but I don't know if that's the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that would be, that would be the side effect of <laughs> yeah. that not having to work so hard. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wants to relax. Mm-hmm. But it feels like it has to drive because you won't you won't handle things. Yeah, it's confusing to me in the moment. Okay. I also want you to know this part to know that it doesn't have to have the answers. You know, sometimes we're asking parts, what do you need from me? And it's kind of like, well, if they knew that, then they, yeah. they could have handled it. And so, right, right. Yeah.
But when you're in this place with it, you know, sometimes you can just stay in this place and keep acknowledging what's up for the part. Just keep asking. Yeah, I just, I really want to understand. Like I said before, what what's driving it to work so hard? I really want to understand what yeah. prompts that. Um, okay. You know, like I wish to, wish I could just travel back in time and say, oh, now I get it, you know. Let's travel back in time to... To my childhood, you know, yeah. to understand what was happening. I'm, there's just so many missing pieces. I think we can do that. I think you can offer the part that you can ask it how it would feel about you going back, meeting maybe some of these other parts, maybe the seven to 10 year old, if she's in there, parts that are that have those burdens of feeling like they have to make a chaotic environment more orderly to be safe mm-hmm. or to avoid punishment. Yeah, I think that would be fruitful. I, um, mm-hmm. I keep bouncing around between, you know, the five-year-old and the 10-year-old and the 13-year-old. <laughs> you know, there's so many. Um, um, Maybe you could I, check those out with the responsible part. Show them... Show the part that you are aware of these other times when you're dealing with stuff. And you could see, you could ask which of them it feels like it's maybe working the hardest for. Seems like it's the adolescent. Mm -hmm. So much, you know, so much going on internally and externally. Okay. At that age. Okay. Do you want to try to go there now? And is the responsible part on board with that, with letting you revisit that? Yeah, I think. I think um, that would explain a lot. I mean, I think it would be helpful. It seems I don't feel any resistance to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See if you can contact an adolescent part or even just the emotions, the feelings around needing to be responsible at that time. And just see whatever comes up. That, uh, as far as the, I mean, there's, um, 
the memory of that time feeling, just feeling so unattractive and undesirable and, you know, yucky. (laughs) But as far as the responsible part, it seems like it was a lot about protecting my mom from the knowing about the sexual abuse with my stepfather. Mm -hmm. It seems like that was a big burden. Yeah. Okay. How are you feeling? How are you feeling about going towards that and learning more about any parts that might be kind of stuck back there? not noticing or I'm not feeling emotions around that and I've also um, spent some time lately um, kind of understanding that situation more Um, like having a lot of compassion and uh, empathy for that part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, see if you can show it all that compassion and let it know that you're here. you'd like to help it out. Yeah, it feels feels seen and heard. Great. Um, And understood. Is there anything that it wants you to understand better or more about its experience, its burdens, what it was like. Really, it's really quiet. Not, <clears throat> not getting very much. Okay. <clears throat> what do you notice about this part? Do you see it? Sense it? Does it have a proximity? Um, I, I have a like a um, image of um, like the the kitchen. That's where I picture that part. Mm-hmm. Um, and sort of a memory of a conversation with my mom, but I don't see really my mom in the picture. Okay. Um, that, it just feels like that's where sh- she's at. Okay. Yeah. So she's in the kitchen and she's dealing with that feeling like she has to protect her mom from knowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just had this, as I'm explaining this place, I'm imagining having a conversation like that part, having a conversation with my mom. I guess the conversation that I felt like I couldn't have. Mm -hmm. Um, that feels really um, 
really important. Yeah, kind of cathartic. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a couple of things you can do there. One is to, you know, stay with the part and during that conversation with mom, really witness what it was like for her and all the different feelings that were coming up in her. The In the 13-year-old? Or yeah. That, yeah. And just let her know that all of her feelings matter, that she can share them all with you. They don't have to be shared with me. Yeah, I feel like there's a deeper understanding that that that, that wasn't her job. Um, right, right, to right. protect my mom. Yeah. Um. She felt like she had to. Yeah. Yeah. And does she feel like you understand why? Why does she feel that she had to? What would happen if she didn't? Yeah. Yeah, I think she gets that. That um, I mean, she felt like that my mom would be hurt, my parents would get divorced. Mm -hmm. You know, that was... Um, that's what she was worried about. Mm -hmm. No. And there's a sense of relief that that that's not true. Mm. Yeah. Well, there may have been some truth in the consequences of if she were to share yeah. it, but yeah. but yeah, it's it wasn't fair for her right. to feel like she had to take all that on. Another thing you can do with this scene, if it feels right, is to enter into it and offer to redo it with her, with your presence, and for you to be there. It could be in this scene or it could be in just with her dealing with this secret and provide for her what she needed from someone. Yeah, I, I feel like that's what's mm -hmm. what how I've been interacting with her. Like, sounds like it, yeah. Yeah, that she really feels absolved. <laughs> mm. Yeah, just keep checking. What does she need from someone? What can you do for her? Again, in her time. Yeah, yeah, I'm picturing being the caring adult that she needed. Mm-hmm.
sort of um, empowering her. Mm-hmm. So that means like you would be the one that she could talk to about all this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I you know just have someone to say all that stuff to. And, yeah. Um, tell the truth and be, and be protected. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would have been good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just stay with her and let her, let her do that with you. There's this, I'm picturing her like feeling like, oh, thank God, I bet, you know, I got that out. Now I'm free to go, you know, be a teenager. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's kind of what we're aiming for here. Is yeah. there anything else that she would like to revisit with you? Is there anything else that she would like to redo and just have your presence Yeah, um, helping her, um, stand up to is what I'm, the word, I don't know if that's exactly the right word, but mm-hmm. to my stepfather and, okay, you know, yeah, telling him what a creep he is. Okay. Yeah. So you can do that. And you can just keep checking with her about what would feel right. Is that something that she wants you to kind of empower her to do, or does she want you to do for her? Either would be okay. This is something she wants to like witness you doing, or yeah, just keep asking her. Yeah, I'm, I'm visualizing the 13 year old just being able to, um, stand up for herself and speak, you know, say the things she wants to say mm-hmm. to him. Okay. Um, and you, so you're there in that scene with her? And she feels yeah. you, she feels your presence. Yeah, otherwise she wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> Great. Great. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do that. And make sure that she gets to speak exactly the way that is right for her and what she needed to. Yeah, I'm telling him all the things that, or she's telling him all those things, and and um, 
and she feels brave because I'm there and I won't let anything happen. Yes, to her. yes, yes. As the thought of punishment came up, but that I won't let that happen. Right, right. It's a sense that uh, that part feels mature and empowered, and the stepfather looks more like a uh, sheepish, mm -hmm. coward kind of. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. <laughs> Is there anything else she'd like to redo with you? Is there a message that you'd like to leave with your mother or anyone else? Well, that's, I, that she wants to say that um, I needed my mom to be strong and mm -hmm. um, protective and mm -hmm. yeah yeah so does that feel like something she wants to wants your help in communicating In her time. It doesn't it have feels, to. Yeah, it just feels so um, sad that that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, yep. But mm -hmm. she's, but she's, um, justified in wanting that, you know? Yeah. And she's justified in being sad about it not happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just letting all, all of her feelings are safe with you. And that they all make sense. There's a call that I'm ignoring, so it's, yeah, I think it's gone away. Okay. Um, Is there anything else that she'd like to revisit with you back in her time? Or would she like to get out of there? Well, she's feeling stronger and, um, yeah, she's feeling stronger. Mm -hmm. um, where does she want to go? That's what I'm yeah. wondering. Yeah, ask her if she's ready to leave that time and place and go be with you anywhere that she'd like. I get this um, 
allyship feeling, like she can mm-hmm. be my, my uh, <laughs> partner in crime is what I was thinking, but hey. I don't know why that thought came up. But yeah, you know, like like a superhero duo or something like that. Absolutely. You know, like a teen warrior kind of feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. Does she have a a place that she'd like to go? That's kind of hers and where she can meet you in the future. Well, the the place that always um, comes up in my imagination, which is also a real place, is um, we're building a tiny house on our property, and it's going to be like my domain. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And that's where I go in my mind with arts that want to just hang out. Okay. Be in nature or whatever. Just check with her, because it could be anywhere. It could be a fantasy place or wherever she wants. So you can make that offer. And if if nothing specific is coming up, that's fine too. But just just make sure that she feels like it's hers. It, there's this... Um... I'm wondering if she wants to be like a an athlete or a um, something like that I never was, you know, like yeah, a, yeah, a Just gym ask, <laughs> ask and and check, and she can try things on. And all of this can be revisited in the future. Yeah. But she doesn't have to go back to the kitchen. And you can <laughs> and you can take care of her from now on and you can remain that person that she can talk to. Yeah, that um, like that image of an athlete or a gymnast, like having all of that outlet and mm-hmm. achieving um, um, feels like an interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Another thing you can do is ask her to check in her body where she is carrying her burdens, the sadness of her, you know, not her mother not being strong or the fear of punishment. Having to keep secrets, just see where she's holding all that and ask her how she'd like to let it go. I, I'm not sure. I, I it, burning off energy like running, you know, like mm-hmm. um, that's what I'm getting. Okay. Um, I 
Yeah. You can tell her to try that out. Try burning it off. Her burdens of worry that her mom will be hurt when she talks to her, that it's her responsibility to manage that relationship, to manage the, the home. So now I have this image of like, like a shot putter, you know, like throwing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. With lots of strength and. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Just tell it, yep. Bait. Tell it, tell it to do that and, and do it until it's all out. So the feeling is like, um, like spinning, like a mm -hmm. dot putter and just spinning and spinning and spinning. And like, there's heat and there's energy and it just kind of all, <laughs> um, um, spir spiraling out into the, into space. It feels like it's great. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have to carry all that anymore. <laughs> Dissolving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, how's she feeling now? Could I ask her if there's anything else that she needs, anything we skipped? just get, get a feeling of or an image of um i mean there's not even a body it's like it's just all energy right um, yeah yeah like no um boundaries great um Yeah. Boundless teenage energy. <laughs> and that is, she can be your, your partner. And, yeah. and that is what makes, makes superheroes is I think <laughs> people, people who are in touch with these parts of them and have that energy And creativity. Yeah. I'm tapping for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So going forward, um, is there a way that 
she wants you to stay in touch with her. Does that feel like something that you can do? You can find her here. And is that something that you want to get specific about getting on the calendar kind of thing? Or what would she like around that? Yeah, this, I remember this from last time and um, it, it didn't really happen. But, okay. but drawing or writing feels really important. Mm-hmm. Like, like to communicate with that part in a physical way. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, that feels yeah. really important and doable. Yeah. Something that is often recommended here is um, to check in, even if it's just for a minute or less, every yeah. day every day for a couple of weeks. So, yeah. Yes, do the drawing and writing when that feels right, but uh, a lot of times just kind of reconnecting for a moment kind of reminds you and this part that, and the rest of the system, that things are changed and that she's with you now. Yeah. And we could also circle back and check in with that uh, responsibility part that we were meeting at the beginning and just see how it feels about this. And does that help it at all in relaxing? Yeah, it feels like it has access to more, like there's more um, energy and Mm -hmm. um, resources available, I guess, is how I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Um, Again, again, like more, more teamwork and um, working together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anything else? Is there any questions or concerns from that part or from the 13 year old? Just that I really there's a real um, strong need to get it on paper, even if it's just like a squiggle or just a, like yep. a big representation to yep. yeah. <laughs> solidify yeah, it. Yeah. Take a moment to do that. Do that with her. I'll share the call with you and I have my notes. Um, okay. And I don't remember if you sent me the last call okay. or not. Did I, overlooked it but um, okay um, i'll double check okay thank you and, yeah okay feel like a good place to stop any questions for me uh no okay thank you thank you good work this was good this was okay <laughs> fruitful okay Take good, James. have a great day Okay, talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye. Do you want to help bring more self-energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Ivan, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, 
that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube. And they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there and give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.